two things. One, I, I don't necessarily project like Kenny, so if you guys would come in a little closer, it's going to make me, my part? It would make me feel better. No. <laughs> Second, uh, I, I really did not, I didn't expect to be here. I've been gone for the last three months. Uh, I didn't think I was going to be home for Memorial Day. <laughs> and uh, I, just a few days before I got back, two days ago, I found out I was coming home. And uh, I thought Kenny told him I was going to be here. And I, of course, wouldn't mind speaking. But uh, because of that, I, I didn't want to talk about the same thing I talked about last time which was basically me telling you guys some more stories and kind of uh, hopefully making everybody think. So uh, I typed some stuff up, but I'm probably going to be talking into my page a little bit. So if I do, please forgive me. Um, so anyways, la last year we talked about, uh, if I remember right, we talked about this concept, this combination of taking requisite skill sets and then combining them with something intangible, right? this intangible quality that lives deep inside all of us. I labeled it as heart. I mean, I think everybody has a different word for it, a different term for it. You've all felt it somewhere deep inside, right? But I realized this year that I never really talked to you about what, what a seal is, what, what a frogman really is. And I think, I think it's probably appropriate to explain that to you guys give you a glimpse of how we view ourselves. And I think the best way to do that, honestly, is to, is to borrow some words from a friend of mine, who I think is far and away the greatest SEAL commander we've ever had. His name's Jocko Willing. Uh, he just recently retired. And so I'm going to read you a, a little bit of his retirement speech so you can get an idea of how I view myself, or how I used to view myself as a SEAL. Um, but before I do, I want to make a point, you know, outside of an official capacity, we don't call ourselves SEALs. Like if I'm talking with my roommates, or, or, or some of you guys know Mike Baumgarten is a ranger, we call ourselves team guys. Um, we've, we've kind of taken the we and we've put it into our I, right? We don't refer to ourselves in the singular. That is a team guy, that is a great team guy. That's just how we talk about each other. Um, the, the concept of team is so ingrained in our DNA, you can't remove it. And it starts in butts. It starts in SEAL training. You show up, you get assigned a swim boat. And if you're caught so much as six feet, exactly six feet from that swim buddy, you, your swim buddy, and possibly and probably your class are beat. When I say beat, I mean mercilessly beat. Think bear crawling for five hours straight with twin 80s on your back. Like that type of thing. It's really senseless in a lot of ways, but wonderful in other ways because the fact of the matter is that it takes two people to clear a room. It takes two people to create a base and maneuver element so that you can flank the enemy. It takes two people to do a combat dive. One person is just alone, but two people are a team. When we think about today, and for me, one of the most one of the most poignant parts about the incident that happened uh, in 2005 with Mike Murphy is that only one person survived. That is so counter to everything that we are as as frogman, as team guys. Um, it, it, it shocked us. It changed a lot of things for us. Um, so I'm going to read this to you guys, and then we'll, we'll talk about it for a little bit. Stop that person. And if, if you're a person that believes or understands the phrase that God is love, then I think war can seem entirely void of God. And, and things can become very bleak if you let them. But a, a closer inspection, I think, will reveal something more. And I think deep down, it's why we're all gathered here today to do this. Because through all the hate, and through all the violence, and just pure evil that you encounter in war, somehow, love finds a way to shine through. 
And I, it's due to the fact that we as human beings are not meant to kill one another. It's not what we're meant to do. It's we're not here to do that. That we find love in the darkest, most insane of endeavors, which is war. Because war is insane. And, and this love of one another, it's what allows us to transcend all the hate and all the misery and to find something greater within us. I have a, I've probably spoken to Marcus about that incident a hundred times over. I really have. And uh, it doesn't matter what comes out in books, film, or the press. What comes back, what always remains, is at a certain point, Mike Murphy made a conscious and aware decision to give up everything he had in the world and everything he was ever going to have. We forget about that, right? I think Clint Eastwood was right. You kill a man, you take everything he has. You also take everything that he ever will have in his life. And he did this. He made this conscious decision to save his friends. At his darkest moment, when everything inside of him was instinctually telling him to stop. He connected with something greater than himself. Something more meaningful than all the hate and the violence and the pain and the misery that surrounded him. And he, tr he transcended beyond himself for some sort of final union with something, some sort of greater self. <clears throat> and he gave up his life on earth for what I think is love. What, what better expression is there than to give up everything you have, everything you will ever have, for the love of your brother? There's nothing greater. You know, in the, team, in the teams, we, we talk about brotherhood a lot. We call it the brotherhood. Um, and it's a term that we use to describe that intangible, intangible quality that binds all of us. It, it connects us together. All of us in this room, we're connected together as men, as women. And it's a force that I can't, I can't describe to you in words, but I feel it. I, I, I feel it everywhere. Everywhere I go. It's, it's what holds us all together. It's what generates motion between us. It's what pushes us forward. It's what, it's what holds us still and keeps us silent. And I believe everyone here has felt it as well. But perhaps you just don't recognize it at times. You know, other people look at us, and I think a lot of it has to do with film, which maybe I'm complicit in. Um, <laughs> but they look at us and they see this brotherhood and it's exalted. And it's, something that you know, we all wish we could be a part of in a way. But I think people look at this and they're not realizing the true nature, the true reality of all of us as human beings. And it's just exemplified in a way within the SEAL teams. And the truth <coughs> is, when I finished Buds, I, I realized two things. I walked away knowing I was different only because I had realized that we were all the same. Everybody has the ability to get through that training because everybody has the ability to transcend themselves through the power of their own minds and leave whatever pain and misery you have behind. And, and that power becomes amplified when you're in these small groups of like-minded individuals all working toward that same goal. I think at a certain point, the group gets too large and you lose that victim of group think, and that's not, that's not what I'm talking about. It's these small groups of like-minded individuals all working for a common goal that share something between, between them. And if, you're, if you spend the time looking, feeling, you can perceive it. You can feel it. 
So here we are about to do something that has absolutely no possible athletic positivity in our program. <laughs> last time, there's no amount of pain that we're going to put ourselves through that it's going to simulate being shot to death on the battlefield. So get that out of your minds. You didn't hear me speak last time. You're not going to do that today. You never will do that. So, so why are we here? What are we to learn from this? How, how do we honor the fall? I, I, I guess I could ask a question. How, how many of you here, in the middle of a competition or mental toughness workout, have felt like quitting? Like truly? <laughs> yeah. So think back to any workout, I don't care which one, to that moment when every muscle in your body was burning, to when you could taste blood on your breath from your lungs burning. Just think back to when you almost stopped, and then all of a sudden you heard your name. You heard someone cheering you, just urging you to push past whatever you were doing, urging you to finish, to become better, to become stronger, to become faster, to improve yourself. And all of a sudden, you feel something. It's a rush of energy, right? and it pushes through your body, it wells through your chest, and it radiates out through your arms and through your legs, and it pushes that pain and that misery out, and then suddenly you finish, and you're done. <laughs> That's the force I'm trying to describe. It's a glimpse of something that's greater than yourself, and it happens give in to the love that you feel from your teammates. And I, I like to think in the final moment that's how Mike Murphy felt. Though I know better than to think it was without pain. I think the way to honor the moment whose sacrifice truly was given out of love is to live our lives with one another, helping one another, and recognizing seeing, and feeling, and living the force that binds all of us together as human beings. And you have that opportunity every day. But every time you walk into this room, you have that opportunity with one another. So today, I, I, I would encourage you to choose a friend, choose a swim buddy, a battle buddy, and attack the workout together, and push yourselves to the point when you feel like quitting. Reach that moment when everything is telling you to stop, when it hurts too much. And in that moment, find that person. Find that person and feel it. Feed off of each other. Practice moving beyond all the pain 